Al Morgan, a 75-year-old guy, was chilling in his super fancy house, watching the sun go down. Even though he was loaded and had this amazing place with incredible art and gardens, he was feeling pretty lonely and bummed out because he was stuck in a wheelchair and had a terminal disease. Al realized that the most important thing in his life wasn't his money, but his kids, Richard, Edward, Benjamin, and Lucy. With his time running out, he just wanted to make sure they'd be all right after he was gone. But he also wondered if he had taught them to be kind, empathetic, and humble. Al figured he'd test their character before deciding how to split his fortune. He got this wild idea to dress up like a homeless man and see how his kids would react if he asked for help. Al roped in his old friend and lawyer Thomas to help him with the plan. They went shopping for some raggedy clothes and shoes at thrift stores, and Al grew out his beard and let his hair get messy. They even gave him a new name, Old Joe, to make sure nobody would recognize him. Al looked in the mirror and couldn't believe the change. He looked like a completely different person. Thomas was amazed too, and they knew the kids wouldn't know it was their dad. One chilly fall afternoon, Al, dressed as Old Joe, went to his oldest son Richard's super nice house. His heart was pounding as he knocked on the door, ready to ask for some food and a place to stay. Richard's wife Jennifer opened the door, and her eyes went wide when she saw this scruffy dude standing there. Al, pretending to be Old Joe, gave her a toothless grin and asked in a raspy voice if she could spare some food and a place to stay. Jennifer looked totally grossed out and stepped back like, Are you serious? You want us to let some dirty stranger in? No way. Al felt bummed but kept his cool saying, If you don't want me to stay, that's fine. But could I at least get some food? I haven't eaten in days. And Jenny's face turned bright red with anger and she shouted, I don't care what you want. We don't help people like you. Now get off our property or I'm calling the cops. She slammed the door, leaving Albert sad and alone on the doorstep, feeling heartbroken. Albert hid in the shadows outside Richard's house. The cold wind pulled at his ragged clothes, but it was the cold treatment from his son and his wife that really hurt him. Taking a deep, shaky breath, Albert stood up straight and pulled himself together. He glanced at Richard's house, where he had hoped to find love and kindness, but only found cold rejection. He knew he couldn't stay there any longer. It would only make him feel worse. As he walked away, part of Albert wanted to shout out and make Richard realize what he'd done, but he stayed quiet, knowing that this tough experience was the only way to really understand his kids. With a broken heart, he continued his journey to find the truth about his family. Disguised as old Joe, Albert walked up to Edward's house, feeling both excited and nervous. The sun was setting, and the evening was getting cooler. He knocked on the door, and when Edward answered, he pretended to be weak and said, Excuse me, sir. I lost my job and have nowhere to sleep tonight. Could I stay in your garage or shed? Edward looked at him with disgust and started his insult. You're such a loser, he said rudely. Why don't you get a job instead of begging? Get off my property before I call the cops. He slammed the door, leaving Albert feeling down and disappointed. With renewed determination, Albert went to Benjamin's house. By now it was colder, and he could see his breath in the air. He knocked on the door and, almost in tears, pleaded, Please, sir, I'm starving and so cold. I just need a little food and warmth. I promise I won't be any trouble. Benjamin looked at him over with disdain. His wife, Claire, joined in the mocking laughter. What a sorry sight, Benjamin scoffed. You must be joking if you think we'll let someone like you in our home. Claire added, You're such a disgrace. Have you no shame? They pushed Albert away and shut the door, leaving him out in the cold. Devastated by his son's lack of compassion, Albert's hope for their redemption faded. But he still had one child left to visit and prayed she would be different. With a pounding heart, Albert stood a few blocks away from Lucy's house, hesitating as the sun set and cast a warm glow on her modest home. He had already been rejected by his three sons, and he was scared of how his daughter might react. Taking a deep breath, he moved forward, hoping Lucy would be different. Albert walked up to Lucy's door, hearing laughter and kids playing inside. He knocked and nervously awaited. The door opened, and there was Lucy with a welcoming smile. She saw the scruffy man and asked kindly, Hi there, I am Lucy. What can I do for you? Pretending to be old Joe, Albert said, Sorry for bothering you, miss. I'm just a hungry old man looking for some warmth. 
Can you help a weary traveler? Lucy saw how tired and dirty he was and felt bad for him. Sure, come on in, she said, smiling gently. You can't stay out in the cold. Albert felt so grateful and happy as he entered Lucy's cozy home. She brought him to the kitchen and made him some food and had him sit at the table. The smell of a homemade meal filled the air, and Albert felt a sense of comfort and belonging he hadn't felt in a while. As he ate, he saw how kind and patient Lucy was with the kids. Throughout the evening, Albert felt more and more at home with Lucy. He noticed her genuine concern as she took care of him, giving him food and shelter without any hesitation. This made him want to get to know his daughter better, the one he had ignored. As they sat in the comfy living room, Lucy talked about how her dad had overlooked her, not knowing it was Albert she was talking to. She mentioned how many times she had tried to get his attention and approval, but was always overshadowed by her brothers. She got emotional talking about how lonely and isolated she felt growing up in the fancy but cold Morgan home. Lucy also shared stories about her own struggles, from being judged for choosing to be a social worker to facing heartbreak and loss. All this time, she had wished for a closer relationship with her dad, someone to lean on when life got tough. Hearing Lucy's honest words made Albert feel a lot of emotions. He realized how wrong he had been and how important love and compassion are. He couldn't keep his secret anymore, so he took Lucy's hand and told her the truth. Lucy, he said, his voice shaking, it's me, your father. I'm so sorry for ignoring you all these years. I didn't see what a treasure you are, and I want to make things right. Lucy couldn't believe what was happening as she realized the truth. Both she and her dad got emotional, hugging each other like they were making up for lost time. Albert knew that his last test had shown him who his kids really were, and it also made him face his own mistakes. He was ready to fix things with his family. A week after the test, Albert had his buddy Thomas, who was also his lawyer, gather all his kids at his big house. They all showed up, confused and curious about what was going on. Albert looked kind of weak and sickly as he stood in front of them and said, Kids, I wanted to tell you the truth about that test I did recently. You probably guessed it, but I was old Joe, the homeless guy you all met last week. All the kids were shocked that their dad would do something like that. Albert went on, I wanted to see how you'd treat someone who wasn't as well off as you. Sadly, Richard, Edward, and Benjamin didn't pass the test. They were mean and rude to old Joe. But Lucy was the only one who treated him with kindness and love. Lucy felt awkward and bad that her brothers had let their dad down. Albert kept going. Lucy, you showed me you have the kindness, understanding, and love that I think are most important. So I've decided to leave all my money to you. Lucy was stunned and didn't know how to feel. She was thankful, but also felt like she didn't deserve it. Albert said, Money can't make you happy, but it can help people. I hope you use it to make the world better, like you've made my life better just by being in it. Albert hugged Lucy tight, tears streaming down his face while his other kids watched quietly. He had made up his mind. He knew love and kindness were what really mattered in life, and he found that in the one kid who had always shown it to him.